Hi, my name is John DeSteiger. I'm the president of Oklahoma Christian University. We have lots of great visitors that come to campus, but we have a very special guest today. We've got the one, the only, Jen Hatmaker with us. <laughs> Jen's going to be on campus today and then also speaking to two packed houses tonight. Jen, we're so glad that you're here on the Oklahoma Christian campus. I am so glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I'm just tickled to death. Well, it's, it's an honor for us to have you. Now, I want to ask you, what do you think about small, private, Christian colleges in the state of Oklahoma? <laughs> well, you may know that I was just right up the road. Um, my husband and I both went to Oklahoma Baptist University in Shawnee, which is so similar to this mm -hmm. university in every way. We had maybe maybe 4,000 kids and um, sort of right there in, in Shawnee, and I loved it. You know, I remember when I was looking across the college landscape trying to figure out, I wasn't sure what I wanted or what was going to work for me, and we looked at huge universities, we looked at state schools, um, and there was something about a small Christian university. Mm. Uh, the, the second I set foot on campus, I said, this is it, this is, this is home, and to this day, I mean, let's see, let's do the math. I graduated 21 years ago, <laughs> so weird. What happened? How, where did it go? <clears throat> so strange. Um, I don't even remember 21 years ago. Um, <laughs> right. But. but you know, Brandon and I, to this day, have dear, important friends and ministry partners and church leaders that we made on mm. our university, at our university. So for us, that set a, a path in front of us that we are still walking on. Um, and this that spiritual formation during those really crucial years 18 to 22 or 23. I, I honestly cannot imagine my trajectory without it. Ah, uh, Jen, that, that's great. I mean, that's that spiritual beginning in, in such an important way, those lifelong friendships. I mean, we see that here at OC as well. Absolutely. So thanks for sharing that. Well, I want to think about when you were a college student. Yeah. Did you see yourself in the kind of ministry that you are in today when you were a student back then? 100% no. Really? I was I, I studied education, so I, I was actually a teacher, but I was pretty sure that I was either going to be a librarian or something like Janet Jackson. I was wrong on both counts, <laughs> desperately wrong. Um, I didn't see a ministry path in front of me at all. Now, I've, I've always loved the church and I've always loved ministry. I'm a pastor's daughter. I, I said that I was not going to, but I'm married a pastor. So that was always... Uh, an important and an enormous part of my life, but you could not have convinced me for all the money in the world um, that this would be the life that I was living wow. 20 years ago. Wow. I had, it just took me by surprise and, and, it, and it grew up small. And I'll be honest with you, I do credit a lot of my spiritual formation during my collegiate years, just this, mm. this grounding and sort of the word and in the world, which was new for me. Um, Cause I kind of came from a very homogenous space and college sort of opens your eyes to what's going on in your culture and what's going on in the world and and in your city and um and so no I, nobody is more surprised on this earth than me that i write books <laughs> and people read them it's so crazy um, and traveling and speaking i didn't expect it but it has been my life's greatest joy mm. it's such a privilege I, I, i'm so humbled by it I'm so grateful for it, and I've told God, and I mean this sincerely, I am here to do his work as long as he'll have me. As long as he will allow me to do it, I'm here, and if he changes up the orders, great. I hold it all very loosely, um, but in the meantime, while he has my foot on the gas still, I am I'm so tickled to get to do this. I get to come and be with you and mm. your students and be on your campus. I mean, what a joy. What a great life. I love it. Well, Jen, we're honored to have you here. Uh, it's very special for us. Well, I, so I want to ask you, you're a best-selling author, uh, a very popular speaker. Um, you have a really special moment in time that, um, that, that, that you have wide influence and impact. Mm -hmm. You and Brandon have five precious children. I do. Caleb, Gavin, Sydney Beth, Ben, Remy. Wow, yes. I can't even remember their names. Yes. <laughs> that was impressive. So... Do they think you're a big deal? No, no. In fact, one of my funniest memories <laughs> ever was the day when I wrote my first book, this was about 10 years ago, and it just feels like this monumental moment. You know, when you're an author, there comes this day when 
the, the book comes in the mail for the first time. You haven't seen it. It's all together. It's, they actually published it. You can't believe it. And so I'm there. It comes in the mail, and I'm like, guys, you guys, oh my, this is a big moment for mom. Here, this is, this is the book that I wrote, and here we're going to open it up, and I pull it out, and I'm working up some tears. I feel like melodrama was right, in order. Right. And I'm like, you guys, look at this. And my daughter stood and goes, for dinner and I was like mm, good moments over and never even begun um, so they I'm just their mom you know yeah. I'm just their mom and, and and to be honest with you we work pretty hard to keep our 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 real life our home life just ordinary mm. and simple we 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 tweak our life just a little bit because um, my husband's a pastor right and so we, we have our, our church that we lead and then I tend to travel on weekends. That's my normal schedule when I travel um, to speak. And so we've always treated our weekdays like other families treat their weekends. Mm. So we zero out. I mean, we are home every night, cook dinner, around the table every night. And um, so we keep a pretty slow, boring pace at home. So they're real unimpressed. In fact, I mean, I have to regularly convince my children that I have a job. They'll just say, Mom, can you? Can, this is my son texting me from high school. Can you bring me Chick-fil-A? I said, no, I'm working. Well, what do you even do? I said, you know what? I'm not explaining myself to you for the 10,000th time. I have a job. Anyway, no, they are great kids. And our house is fun and funny and loud. And um, I wouldn't have it any other way. Sometimes I think, what would it be like to have two kids? I, I can't imagine it. but. It, they are, mm. they're such a joy. My oldest son is a freshman in college. Um, and so now it is occurring to me that I could literally be these kids' mother. And that is very strange reality. Um, but, uh, but they are a joy. And of course, our youngest two are adopted. They're right. Ethiopian. Right. And so we are literally colorful and loud and proud. And my family is my delight. Ah, that's, a, that's, that's very special. What a blessing. You, you mentioned meals a couple of times. You love to cook. I do. You love to cook really beautiful stuff, special stuff. Have you always been like that? I was such a domestic tragedy when we first got married. Um, I, the, the truth of it is, um, during our first year of marriage, when we got married in college, uh, which I don't recommend. I don't recommend students. That's dumb. Um, I, my father-in-law came to visit us, and I served him canned ham. I don't even know what that is. It's the grossest thing I've ever done. I'm so humiliated to this day. A handful of years ago, I just decided, you know what? These people in this family, they're just going to need to eat every day. That's a part of the way the human body works. So maybe instead of thinking this is such a chore and such a task, mm -hmm. uh, maybe I could just change my mind about how I think about this. And I really did. I just flipped a switch. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so now cooking to me is just a great joy. And it, for me, I think... I'm not inherently nurturing. I'm just, I'm kind of sarcastic and I'm not a real coddly kind of a person. So cooking for my family is my tangible way to like care for them, mm. really, mm. really deeply care for them. And, and so I have created this whole tribe of amazing eaters. They'll eat anything and they love everything. Mm. So they're fun to cook for. Um, so that's, I look forward to that part of my day, just shutting down the laptop, turning on the music, chopping through the first onion. Just, uh, I, I really, cooking has become um, one of my favorite things that I do for people and even for myself. Do, do your kids help you or do they just, they're just waiting for the fruits of your labors to come out? Do you know that they would help me except I am controlling? Uh, Say no more. Got it. Yeah. Okay, good. Like get out of my it. space is yeah. how I feel about yeah, it. Right. Everybody leave right. and let me have this hour. Okay. Um, so yeah, anyway. I should probably be teaching them, but I would rather just enjoy it. I'm being selfish. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've also kind of taken the, the step with those great meals to have a very special group of friends yeah. that gather regularly. And everybody, whoever hosts, yeah. has a very special meal. Tell us about, about that. I guess it was probably five years ago. We started a supper club with three other couples. Um, and, and we barely knew each other at the mm. time. It was a real kind of gamble. Is this going to work? Is this chemistry going to work? Um, and we were all in different churches. We were all in different parts of the city. Um, and we started a supper club. And it has been um, such a gift mm. 
to this season of life, we, we meet about once a month, and whoever's hosting, we rotate houses. So whoever's hosting that, um, that month, they do all the cooking, all the planning, all the cleaning, and the rest of us just show up. Um, and so it's great fun all the way around. And so, of course, what, has, what began as good food around a table has become just good unity, mm -hmm. good community. We travel together. Um, we vacation together. Our families have done so many things together. And so I always tell people, um, it doesn't have to be fancy, this community mm. we're all hungry for. Just if you can put on a pot of chili, you can get started. Mm. It does not have to be. We have some legitimate chefs in our crowd. But, you know, if you can make a hamburger and invite people around the table, you can get started. Mm. We need each other. Don't we, we do. Desperately. Absolutely desperately. I think often if, if many, many things fell away in my life, um, if some things that feel dear now went away tomorrow, if, if, if some of the career things um, just dissipated, I, and all I was left with was my little church and my little family and my little tribe of friends, that would be enough, mm -hmm. really. I mean, God has given such grace to us in relationships. We feel so relationally rich. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are, those are my treasured treasured possessions and I will protect them at all costs and everything else is just gravy on top. Mm. Uh, that's, that's really, really special. Your books have been used by a number of our students and others here at OC as, as study guides to, yeah. to, to do group devotionals and things with. Um, Seven, For the Love. Uh, are you working on a new book? Now? I Well, I, it's done. It comes it's out done. in August. Oh, uh -huh. and what is it? Can you tell us about that? I haven't said the title yet. Uh -huh. I will tell you after. Okay. We're going to okay. talk about it next week, though. Okay, okay. Very good. Next week. Very good. Um, well, you've had a great impact on our students who have done some of the things that you have talked about in these books. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really special to them as well. That's phenomenal. You know, um, we were talking about this earlier, how some of the students on campus have gone through the seven experiment, which... Um, was a couple of books ago for me, right. but that was this social experiment of, of reducing and sort of dismantling the excess in our life. So when I did that project in the first place, which is um, seven, seven areas of excess, we spent one month on each and whittled it down to just seven choices. So um, we, had, we tackled food and mm. clothing, possessions, spending, waste, stress, um, so when we did this, like for example, you know, we ate the same seven foods for a month. We wore the same seven pieces of clothing for a month. We only spent money in seven places for a month and, um, and so on and so on. When that book came out and then readers started saying, hey, we're doing this in our small group or we're doing this on our campus or, you know, my, my, my student small group is going to, I couldn't believe it. Mm. Like, what, what, why? Why are you doing it? It never occurred to me that anybody wow. would think, I'd like to try this in my own life. And so to know that some of your students went through that, it just warms my heart to no end. I, I wish that those were some concepts that I would have grasped mm -hmm. at their age. Uh, I, that wasn't even on my radar. I, we made a lot of consumeristic decisions early on that took us a decade to unravel from. Mm -hmm. And so I love that your kids are already thinking like that and putting themselves in, under that sort of um, leadership. That's I, I have so much. I have so many hopes for the next generation. They're outstanding. And Jen, here at OC, and I know at other colleges as well, um, young people are thinking so they much are. more um, holistically and and they deeply are. than I ever did at this age. I'm blown um, away by them. Their spirituality is just very, very deep. I, I love that you say that because. I hear, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of chatter around this generation and, and primarily those ahead of them talking about them. And some of it is not flattering and, and, and there's sort of a, a they're typecasted in mm -hmm. a lot of ways, the, the millennials and, mm -hmm. and what they hold dear and what they value and how fragile they are. But that's not been my experience with them. I, I see the opposite. When I, when I pay attention to this next generation, I am thrilled about what's coming up behind us. They're smart. They're incredibly engaged in the world. They're paying attention. Um, they are, they ask really good questions and mm -hmm. they push in areas that when I was their age, I just drank the Kool-Aid. Mm. I didn't, I wasn't a critical thinker. And 
they are, and they're incredibly socially engaged. I just, I believe in them, and I am, I am thrilled that they're behind us. I think we're gonna be able to pass the baton to them with confidence. Mm. I think you've described a lot of our students very, very, mm -hmm. very well. Um, and they love God. They do. And they love others. And that's, that's the thing, right? Right. right. Those are our mar marching orders. And, and I, I'm proud of them. I'm proud of how diligently they pursue Jesus and how diligently they pursue their neighbor. I mean, to, to me, that's the scope of the gospel. Um, and so it's, it's a thrill for me today to get to be here with them and even just speak a handful of words into their ears as we're like cheering them on and raising them up and, and mm -hmm. sending them out. So um, thank you for your work with this next generation. I can't think of anything more important. It's, what could be more important than forming the next wave of leadership? Uh, it's just your, your, your work and your university is just an enormous gift to the future. Mm -hmm. So thank you for all you do with students. Um, Jane, you're very kind. Um, we enjoy working with the students. Honestly, I think they have greater impact on us mm. than, than we might on them. I completely believe that, and well, same for me. Last question. Okay. If, if you had a chance to share one tidbit with our students or anybody else watching this video, what would be that tidbit? Mm. Um, I, I, I really want to tell the next generation to, to go forth in courage and in strength. Um, there is... It's a, it's, a, it's a new day. It's a day you and I did not grow up in mm -hmm. with so much noise. It, there's so much swirling around them all the time and a million voices and a million points of input coming at them from every which direction. It can be confusing, honestly. I mean, we, did not have to, we didn't have to break through all that chaos. Mm -hmm. um, we had just more a handful of lines of input into our life. And so, um, so what I would tell your students is with so much change around them, Jesus is the same. He's the same as he's always been. He's told us to behave the same way in this world that we always have. And, and it's enough. It is enough to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. It is enough to love our neighbor as ourselves. Mm -hmm. Both of those are going to take courage. Both of them are going to take strength and resolve in, in perhaps a way that it hasn't been required mm -hmm. of a generation before them. I mean, they are really going to have to plant their mm -hmm. feet and stand strong, stand strong, but I think they're capable. I think they're able. I, I think there is just sort of a holiness reserved for this next generation that's unprecedented, mm -hmm. that we haven't seen before. And so um, what I want them to know is there's this enormous amount of us ahead of them, just by one or two generations. And we are for them and we are with them. I do not, I, I am not gonna join the groundswell that looks at them with condescension or I'm not gonna patronize them or tell them all the ways they're getting it wrong because I think they're getting it right in so many, so many ways. And so um, I, I believe our future is bright in their hands. Um, mm. And I am praying for God's strength to just rain down over their generation so that they can rise up and lead us next. How great is that? Be strong, be courageous, love God, love others. Jen, thanks for being with us. My what a pleasure. Blessing. Thank uh -huh. you.